22 September 2011. It might be a windy, blustery, cold day in Hampshire, England, but things are heating up between the two opposing teams on the cricket pitch. The facing batsman has a runner who decides to steal a sneaky run, but at the same time, a close infielder from a 90 degree angle would come along at a furious pace to try to get to the ball. Crash! Bats flying spectacles everywhere. The two cricketers run into one another at full speed and collide. Your well, first question is, could they not see one another? <laughs> the answer, no. They did not. Both these teams are blind cricket teams. And although that explains the collision, it leaves us with quite a few questions. How do they play? Why do they play? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today please allow me the opportunity to explain line cricket, tell you what we can learn from it, and also relate to you how the love of the game got me standing here where I am right now. Line cricket and sighted cricket are very similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to relate and use the rules of cricket to explain blind cricket. And I will explain to you for those who need it. Cricket has three main disciplines. Firstly, batting, that's hitting the ball. Bowling, that's throwing the ball. And fielding, that's stopping the ball and catching the ball and giving it back. Now, blind cricket is very similar, but there is a few things that is not the same. And probably the most obvious is this. The ball looks like this. Right? Same size, perspex though, hollow <coughs> inside, and full of bearings so that if you move it, it makes a noise. However, this ball does not make a lot of noise when it travels through the air. And that is why in blind cricket we will not bowl over arm, we will bowl under arm because that makes a lot of more noise, more contact with the ground. How does a bowler then bowl in blind cricket if they can't see the batsman, never mind the stumps? <laughs> this is how it works. Your keeper in blind cricket plays a crucial role. This is the situation where it will take place if the bowler will stand and ask, which sometimes the umpire has to bring him to the wicket because he's not at the right spot, but that happens. <laughs> then you would ask uh, the keeper, direction please. The keeper will go behind the stumps, that's the free stick sticking up behind the batsman, and then shout a signal. It could be anything like, um, wiki wiki wiki, or he saw he saw he saw. <laughs> the bowler an opportunity to get his direction and start bowling but before he does that he has to ask the batsman are you ready batsman that's it and say yes and then the bowler will commence but the moment the ball leaves his fingers is he has to shout play otherwise it's a no ball that allows the batsman on the other hand to get an idea when the ball is coming and more or less where it's coming from Communication in cricket, vital. In life cricket, absolutely crucial. The team is divided into three groups, B1, B2, and B3. B1s see nothing at all. B2s are like me, who see a little bit, enough to get into trouble. And then B3s, who see a bit more, and not allowed to drive though, but some of them do. Now, you have to imagine a lot of communication will happen, so the keeper, and those who's got B3 side will tell other players that the ball is coming their way. But it's also the responsibility of those players, if they are going for a ball, to tell everyone. Otherwise, you get the situation what we had in Hampshire. Just to let you in, the runner on that day was me. I had a fleeting moment of inside feeling of pride when I found out that the opposing team member had to get stitches. It was not long lived though, because 10 minutes later, I was escorted off the field and spent the night in hospital with So that's the game in a nutshell. But what can we learn from it? Firstly, if 
the want is strong enough, the how becomes easy. If you really want something, you'll find a way. And if there's no way, you make one. I always wanted to play cricket in provincial colours. I started playing in 2009, and I was always the only girl on the pitch. However, I'm so glad to say that changed. And by 2014, although I've already moved away, I was asked to represent the UK in the first ever all-female international match against Nepal. By that time, I had moved back already, and now I was playing for Pretoria Blind Cricket. But again, for some time, I was the only girl in the team. It was a proud moment when I did get my provincial colours, the first girl to do so. But what meant so much more to me was being part of the development of the first all-female blind people team in South wow. Africa. You see, as Robert Frost said, there were two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one away from Mr. Frost. I did not take any of those two. I made a third. And lastly, how did the love of cricket get me where I am now? I attended a workshop presented by Fani de Village, my favourite brother. And yes, it was Philip Fani who said he attended a Toastmasters event at a Cow Ten school. He's worked with this exactly. If you want to prosper and excel and grow as a leader and as an individual, join Toastmasters today. You will never look back.